Hello, welcome to the Bears Gym. Today we have a momentous uh, time in the book of Isaiah. We are gonna we're gonna get the bear rolling like a bear running down a hill. And um, and we're gonna try to capture our objective here. So, open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 62. And let's capture our objective. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Right now on the earth, the church is a lamp, as a light, as salt. After the rapture of the church into the heavens, up to the new Jerusalem, to enjoy the marriage supper of the Lamb, God is going to refine the earth with judgment and fire. He's going to refine Israel, and he's going to judge the earth. And during that time, Israel is going to realize that Jesus Christ was their true Messiah. And when that time comes, they will be the lamp, the light, and the salt. Verse 2, And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. Israel, rolling all the way back to the days of Abraham, was given a promise in borderless that stretch to the Persian Gulf, to the Red Sea, to the Euphrates, north of Lebanon into Syria. They never really did encapsulate all their promised lands because they sinned. They refused to obey the Lord and right from the get-go they just began to break his commandments. We won't go into great detail but they did probably what you and I would do. We, 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 we fall. You know, we're, we're just people. And if we don't stay tightly attached to the Word of God, we find ourselves in trouble. There was a time in my life, in my late teenage years, where I found myself in trouble. Perhaps you did too. Because I didn't stick closely to the Word of God. And any nation, any man, any woman, that is a child of God, that does not adhere tightly to this beautiful, beautiful word of God that God has given us to learn and understand his precepts. If we find ourselves not adhering to us, we will find ourselves in trouble, as Israel did. And because Israel forsook his commandments, the Lord forsook them many times because they rejected him over and over and over again. And because of that also, their lands were never really uh, stretched forth. The borders were really not stretched forth like God had it intended them to be. Very much as God intended the Garden of Eden to be a long and lengthy residence for Adam and Eve. 
those that God created special to dwell there. But they fell. They brought the great curse upon the earth. Not that somebody else on earth wouldn't have done it sooner or later, but God gave them a very special task to just enjoy a life in the Garden of Eden. And he gave, told them one thing, don't take from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That, that's very simple. Simple task. They, they pretty much had no other restrictions except for that one thing. And isn't that human nature? You got all these things you can do, but you're told by your parents, don't, don't do this. And so when your parents are gone, what do you try to do? You try to do that. And that's what Adam and Eve did. They brought a curse upon the land. Israel brought a curse upon themselves by marrying themselves and crossing the lines of non-believers, of pagan idolaters, and intermarrying with them and worshiping their gods. And it brought a curse. And therefore, they never really encapsulated all the land that God had promised them. We move on. Verse 5. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thine enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine. For the which thou hast labored, no more will I give it away, says the Lord. But they that have gathered it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. One day, Jerusalem will be a city of righteousness. And let's face it, right now, they're not. They have pride fest and, you know, uh, worshiping the Kabbalah. Uh, uh, the, the, they have a, a huge effort of underground uh, Masonic Islamic practices in Israel. They worship money. They worship power. They worship education. But they don't worship Jesus Christ. They don't worship our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. But one day they will. Verse 10, go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Right now, a little bit, Jerusalem is kind of... Uh, a forsaken place. You have the Arab nations surrounding it, looking to oppress it. I think they try to oppress it because they're jealous of the fruitfulness by which they have brought into the land. They showed up as a, and Israel was a desert wasteland. Now it's a fruitful, fruitful vine of a country. If Israel would right now take over the Arabian Peninsula and the Arabah, they could turn it into a lush, a lush paradise. They could. Because they have some of God's blessings. They have some of God's fruitfulness as a people, as a land. And they have the ability to turn a desert wasteland into a fruitful garden. They have that ability. Very intelligent people. We move on now. 
as the rolling of a scroll in the temples. They didn't have books like this. They had scrolls. So we're just going to scroll right into the next chapter. Isaiah 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. Number one, this is speaking of Jesus. He came as a savior. He will next come as a judge. As a judge exacting punishment upon the wicked of the earth. First he came stained with his own blood to cover the sins of all those that would believe on his name. And the next time he will come stained in the blood of his enemies because he's gonna come the next time to judge in vengeance. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold it. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, Surely there are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their Savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them in his love, and in his pity he redeemed them, and he bare them, and carried them all the days of old. Christ, for the church, is our bridegroom. Jerusalem, after the tribulation period, as the millennium brings in, Jerusalem will, in a sense, marry Christ. Christ and Jerusalem will be like a married couple. They will be joined because Jerusalem finally will acknowledge their true Messiah and he will heal them. Verse 10, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old Moses and his people saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name, that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness, that they should not stumble as a beast goeth down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory, where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies toward me, are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us. And Israel acknowledges us not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. Jesus. He was the beginning and the end. He was the creator. He has the keys of death and hell. The Lord Jesus Christ, 
my salvation, the salvation of the earth. And if you choose to have that salvation, all you got to do is ask because you can't earn it. All you got to do is be willing to repent of your sins. Are you willing to repent of your sins? Do you want to make a change? Do you want to be clean? Do you want to have a clean heart and a relationship with God? Then you say that prayer to Jesus now. You say that prayer to Jesus, he'll hear your prayer and he will forgive you, wash you clean and give you new life, a new lease on life. We move on. It's kind of interesting. The Lord Jesus really has done everything for us in the spiritual realm that needs to be done. All we need to do is receive it, be grateful for that forgiveness, and then respond accordingly. In other words, obey, change, be willing to listen to his word. Pretty simple, not hard. Anybody can do it. It's just, are you willing to do it? I want to be willing. If you want to be willing, you can do it. Because it's not hard. If a bear can do it, you can do it. Where is him that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble as a beast goeth down into the valley? The spirit of the Lord caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of thy bowels and thy mercies toward me, are they restrained? Doubtless, thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. Wow. Can that be you? Can that be you? Can that be me? In your heart? You say, I feel sad. Then this can be you. And this is me, because this is what I want. My Lord, you are my Father. You are my Redeemer. Your name is from everlasting, my Lord Jesus Christ. That can be you. And that can be me, because I've chosen it to be me, to say that to live that, to love that, and that can be you. We move on now. Verse 17. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and harden our hearts from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary we are thine, thou never bear us rule over them. They were not called by thy name. They were not called by thy name. God has given us a great privilege here in the New Testament age to be believers in Jesus Christ. And that privilege ushers us into eternity. That's, that's a privilege I don't want to miss out on. And I hope that's a privilege you don't want to miss out on. And if you're standing on the outside, now is the time, friend. Now is the time. Jesus is near you, in your heart and in your mouth. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, forgive me. Come into my life. That's simple. But are you willing to change? Are you willing to repent? That's sometimes where the problem lies. But if you're willing, all it takes is some words from an honest heart to admit what you already know and he already knows. And all you got to do is do it. 
Chapter 64, we move on. Like the roll, the rolling of the scroll, we just keep right on rolling. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down, that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we look not for, thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he has prepared for him that waiteth for him. As a child of God, I wait for God to move. I wait for Jesus to speak. I wait for him to create action and movement, a door to be open that I can go through it. That's a beautiful thing. And once again, you can be that person. I can be that person. All it takes is a willingness to obey our creator, Jesus Christ. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art wroth. For we have sinned, and those is continuance, and we shall be saved. But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. Any of our righteous deeds that we do, you know, get baptized, you know, pass out tracts, give money, do good deeds to, you know, for this and that. They're filthy rags. They don't accomplish anything. They don't make us righteous. He did all the cleansing on the cross. Now, obeying is just a demonstration of your faith that exists. That doesn't grant us privileges. It just simply is a gratitude for what he's already done for us. Verse 7 of Isaiah 64. There is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art our potter, and we are the work of thy hand. He's the, he's the molder of the clay, and we're the clay. And all you got to do is let him mold you. Whatever he wants, whatever he wants you to be, just let him do it, and it'll be good. Be not wroth very sore, O Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech thee, we are all thy people. Thy holy cities are a wilderness. Zion is a wilderness, a desolate wilderness. Jerusalem, a desolation. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. Wilt thou refrain thyself for these things, O Lord? Wilt thou hold thy peace and afflict us very sore? God does afflict us. When we get out of control, we get out of line. Perhaps a little sin enters in. Perhaps just to make you better. God does bring discipline because he's a good heavenly father. We move on, chapter 65 of Isaiah. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold, behold me, behold me, unto a nation that was not called by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people which walketh in a way that was not good. After their own thoughts, after their own, their own will. Not my will, God says. A people that provoked me to anger continually to my face, that sacrificeth in the gardens and burned incense upon altars of brick, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments, which eat swine's flesh and broth of abominable things as in their vessels, which say, Stand by thyself, come not near for me, for I am holier than thou. The Lord says to them, These are a smoke in my nose, a fire that burneth all the day. 
Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence, but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom. Your iniquities and iniquities of your fathers together, saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains and blasphemy upon the hills. Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Thus saith the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one saith, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth his seed out of Jacob and out of Judah, an inheritor of my mountains, and mine elect shall inherit it, and my servants shall dwell there. Sharon shall be a fold of flocks in the valley of Achor, a place for the herds to lie down in. For my people have sought me. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer, and when I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that which wherein I delighted not. God hates to judge. He does. He would rather that you repent. But the time comes for nations, people groups, even continents, churches, families. If they don't get it together after hearing the knowledge of the truth, he does, he, he does bring the sword. Sometimes the sword judges. Sometimes the sword kills. Sometimes the sword divides. And the division is good. And you may not like it. It brings the the division between the evil ones in the family and those that are righteous in the family. And it's a good division. Don't fight it. Just let it happen. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold my servants. They shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For us, the power of salvation. Don't be ashamed of your faith in Jesus Christ. Let it shine. Be salt and light wherever you are at. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name that he who blessed himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth, because the former troubles are forgotten and because they are hid from mine eyes. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind. One day this earth and these heavens, our solar system, these, this, all that we see here is going to pass away to someplace else. We don't really know where. Maybe where the animals are going to all live on these, these planets and it's going to be taken away. But there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And we're going to be there. If you love Jesus, you're going to be there. But be ye glad and rejoiced forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in thy people and my people, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child that, that dies of less than a hundred years old, and the sinner being a hundred years old or less that dies shall be accursed. In other words, if somebody dies off during the millennial reign, during the time of blessing upon the earth, less than 100 years old, they're going to be thought accursed. In other words, wicked. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, in mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Amen for that. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they that are the seed of the blessed of the Lord and their offspring with them, 
And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. I like that. Before we even call out in prayer, he answers. Not so much now. Sometimes he does. But especially then. That's a beautiful thing. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. Chapter 66. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You want the Lord to hear your prayers? Be of a contrite and repentant heart. Be broken in spirit and contrite. And when the word of God is speaking to you, listen. Because that's God speaking to you. He that killeth an ox is as if he slows a, slews a man. He that sacrificeth a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burns incense as if he was blessed as an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. Speaking of the evil upon the earth, the evil of man that knows the right, but practices evil idolatries, false religions. Verse 4 of Isaiah 66. I will also choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them. Because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear. But they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast ye out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all ye that love her. Rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. The new Jerusalem is going to be a righteousness. The Jerusalem that comes in the thousand-year reign and in the new heavens and the new earth upon this earth, that is for rejoicing. That ye may suck and be satisfied with the breasts of her consolations, that ye may milk out and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, ye shall be born upon her sides, and be dandled upon her knees, as one whom his mother comforteth. So will I comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like a herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation toward his enemies." For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. You don't want to oppose the Lord Jesus. He's loving, merciful, and forgiving. But if you cross him, you disobey him, and you war against his people and against him, he's going to bring out the sword and you're not going to like it. They that sanct themselves, sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden, behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, and the abominations and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, 
It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. And I will set a sign amongst them, and I will send those that escape of them into the nations to Tarshish, Pol, Lud, and draw the bow to Tubal and Javan to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have they seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory amongst the Gentiles. Amen for that. That, is, that will be the ultimate evangelizing process right there. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all the nations upon horses and in chariots and litters and upon mules and upon swift beasts to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel into the house of the Lord, and I'll also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Praise the Lord on that as well. When the new heavens and the new earth kicks in and this, this old world is taken out of the way, everything that God has put in place will never pass away again. Beautiful. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring to unto all flesh. When God judges, he don't mess around. And the lake of fire is going to burn forever of those that oppose the Lord Jesus. And those in the New Jerusalem and the Jerusalem on earth somehow are going to be able to see that outer darkness, that, that lake of fire, those that have died opposing Jesus Christ. You don't want to oppose Jesus Christ. He's the creator. He's your God. He's my God. And the best thing you can do right now if you oppose him is to repent and say, Jesus, I'm, for, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me new. Make me your child. I want to be with you forever. God bless you, friends. We finished our objective. We captured our big book, this great book of Isaiah. We finally did it. it took us a while, but we captured our objective. We ran hard. We moved hard. We prayed. We rejoiced. We struggled, but we did it. So as we finish out the book of Isaiah and we move on to other books in the Bible, God bless you and thank you for being with me through this awesome and beautiful study. I, it's been a great pleasure and I say praise you Jesus for it. And See you next time, friends. God bless you.